A great time to set a new goal or new goals is at the beginning of the year, like 2023. We all do this and don't worry, this is in no way a video to shame people for wanting to improve in certain areas of their lives. This video is to bring to your attention a, a goal that sometimes gets overlooked. It was a goal that I actually overlooked until my coach brought it to my attention because it's a goal that affects every area of our lives. This is Coach A.T. Moore, and this is a different conversation. When we set out to set our goals, we often start with things like health goals, financial goals, relationship goals, learning goals, absolutely nothing wrong with any of these goals. But I've been a member of a coaching and mentoring group called Danielson for almost two years. It was a decision I made to myself to invest in my personal growth and development. And hands down, it was the best investment I've ever made. A week ago, we were learning about the importance of establishing emotional goals. I had never thought about that. Never thought about that. So what are emotional goals? It is a goal for how you want to feel on a regular basis. Because here's the thing, the quality of your life and my life is determined by the condition of our heart. So if there is any area we need to have goals in, we must have emotional goals. We can't set our goals in isolation either. Why is this? Because every area of our life is impacted by another area. So how we feel on a regular basis matters. Our emotions and feelings affect everything, which is why we must protect our hearts because everything flows from the heart. Now, psychologists have started to see that the largest mental health problem in our modern day is not depression and it's not anxiety, at least not at a clinical level. The biggest health problem is a term called languishing. What is languishing? Languishing is a failure to thrive. It is the condition of someone that may be able to function, but has lost a sense of hope and meaning. Languishing is not the presence of a mental illness, but it is the absence of mental and emotional vitality. It's like a weariness of the soul and, and an inability to delight in anything in life. Languishing is like an inner deadness. And I believe this is where a lot of us have been or we currently are. But with languishing, you may not experience like major depression symptoms, but you're not functioning well socially or psychologically either. Some experts associate languishing with overall feelings of emptiness or just not feeling anything at all. So in other words, you may feel different, low, but not really experience any extreme negative emotions. While languishing is not a formal mental health diagnosis, the emotions that you are experiencing during this time are very valid and they're real. Now, not everyone who is languishing will experience it in the same way, like with the same intensity. Languishing will affect some of your decisions, behaviors and emotions towards others, uh, yourself or the world. So some examples or some signs of language uh, or some signs of languishing are things like declining invites to activities you would normally enjoy, um, attending the event only to leave early because it didn't bring you any enjoyment, moods that are not too high or too low, like you're not happy, but you wouldn't say that you're sad either, feeling unmotivated more often than usual, feeling unsettled but not highly anxious, uh, difficulty focusing on certain tasks, especially some days more than others, feeling detached from life, tasks, or people, but not experiencing negative emotions toward them, apathy towards life, and difficulty getting excited about anything, fatigue and burnout, loss of interests and passions and hobbies, feelings of stagnation, and feeling disconnected from your purpose in life. Now, I just wanted to give you some examples of what languishing is, just in case you wanted to see if you've ever been in that state. So let's get back to setting our emotional goals because I want us to do that as we enter into 2023. Along with your other goals, I want you to include this one as well. But before you can accomplish any goal, you, me, we first need to have clarity about the goal. You can't accomplish any goal without clarity, 
You can't you can't accomplish any goal without clarifying it first. I think this is one of the biggest reasons why people don't accomplish their goals because they don't take the time to get clear enough on what the goal is they're trying to accomplish and have some strategies to accomplish it. But that's a different video. Write the vision and make it plain so that they that read it can run with it. When you are writing your emotional goals, take the time to find the specific language that clearly explains how you want to feel. You also wanna make sure that you understand what you're writing down. If you can't comprehend it and understand it, there's no way you will be able to apply it because there's levels to understanding. Understanding something enough to be able to talk about it, and then there's understanding something enough to actually run the play, follow through, and execute. So the difference between talking and doing. So there are three questions that I want you to think about regarding your emotional goals. You ready? Question number one, what do you want? What do you want? I want you to identify three words, no more than three, that clearly describe what your desired emotional state is for your life the majority of the time. And when I say the majority of the time, that be I mean because life happens. And when life happens, there is an, there's, there's an appropriate emotion that is attached to that situation. So, but regardless of that, what are three words that can describe what your desired emotional state is for the majority of your life? the majority of the time. Number two, question number two, when do you want it? Because remember, goals are dreams with deadlines. If, if, if no deadlines, it's just a dream. Do you believe that you have the power to change your emotional state? Or do you have a victim mentality? Are your emotions regulated by outside influences? Question number three, who do you need to help you accomplish these emotional goals? Listen, no one can become the best version of themselves by themselves, period. Now keep this in mind. There is something you're going to need to do in order to reach these goals. And in addition to that, there's something you're going to need to do in order to stay in the place that you have that you have decided you want to that you want to be in. So if you say that peace is one of your emotional goals, then there's something you're going to have to do in order to reach a goal of having peace in your life. And then once you get peace in your life, there's something that you're going to have to do in order to keep peace in your life. And that might mean some real boundaries. All right, now as we wrap up, I want you to do a little bit of homework. In addition to the goals I know you're already going to set for 2023, I want you to keep your financial goals. I want you to keep your health goals. I want you to keep your relationship goals, right? Your bay goals. I want you to keep your learning goals. I want you to keep all of that. But in order for you to be able to accomplish any of those, you're going to have to be in the right emotional state. So I want you to select, I want you to come up with three words that describe your emotional quality of life. Three words that describe the type of emotional quality of life you are seeking for 2023. The vision and goals for your life emotionally. Three words. We're not talking about how we're gonna achieve it yet. We're just trying to identify what it is. The vision and goals for our life emotionally. So here's some examples. Peace, joy, self-love, freedom, love, contentment. Those are just some examples. I want you to come up with your own. You can leave them in the comments. I would love to hear some of your emotional goals for uh, 2023. I'll actually start it off. I'll leave mine in there. Um, yeah, leave, leave a comment. And let me know what your emotional goals are going to be for 2023. I can't wait to read it. I hope this video has been helpful as you are preparing to enter into 2023, the best version, the best year, all of that. That's what we want to do. New year, new beginnings, right? We should be, our mindset should be, I'm going to, I'm going to grow into I go. I'm going to grow into I go. And remember, growth isn't magic. Growth requires methods. 
This is Coach A.T. Moore, and this has been a different conversation. Thanks for watching.